skyscrapers soaring to heights once thought impossible, bridges crossing seas or entire cities built on water. These amazing feats of design and engineering are a testament to the skill and ambition of a technologically advanced world. How can just one building represent a whole country? No doubt an embassy is more than just a bricks and mortar. It's a symbolic emblem of every country. It should show all the airs and graces of a nation presenting itself on the world stage. Today's topic is centered around the intriguing tale of how the United States of America built its most advanced, high-tech, and controversial embassy. Stay with us to the very end as we unravel the mysteries behind the most talked about U.S.-built fortress worth billions of dollars, the U.S. Embassy. So if you're a newly established nation and you want to open an embassy in London, there are a few things you should know. First off, you're going to need a headquarters. Now, strictly speaking, the building itself is called a chancery. The word embassy refers to the people employed there and the work they do. But for our purposes, we're going to call it an embassy. The U.S. Embassy in London is not just a home away from home. It's the embodiment of a special diplomatic relationship and the seat of one of the most coveted ambassadorial positions in the world. When it opened in 2018, it was not only the largest embassy in the UK, but also one of the most technologically advanced buildings in the world. The new headquarters is an array of high-tech security features blended seamlessly into a $1 billion 21st century fortress modeled on the castles of medieval Europe. But the story of its construction is anything but diplomatic. Guess what? To build this marvel, the U.S. gave up what was seen as the best-placed embassy in London and a location whose history dates back almost to the founding of the Republic, and they traded it for a post-industrial wasteland that most cab drivers would refuse to drive to. The Americans chose that site as it was one of a few in central London that had enough space to contain all the security measures necessary, including being at least 100 feet from all buildings. News has it that the Netherlands has moved its embassy there, and China considered the location too. Well, to me, this is an event that emphasizes the saying that before every great glory, there is a story. This is the untold story of the USA's most advanced and most controversial embassy. There's more to know. Let's get deeper. It all started in 1785 when John Adams moved into his house on the corner and became the USA's first ambassador to Britain. Since then, it's hosted two former embassies and during World War II, housed the European headquarters of the US Army and Navy. Then in 1960, the U.S. mission moved into this purpose-built embassy on the west side of the square. Built at a time when the USA had reached superpower status, it evoked a country showing its confidence overseas. The U.S. embassy was designed by Finnish-American architect Iro Saarinen. This monumental building combined ancient and modern forms. Like many buildings in London, it's clad in Portland stone, which, along with its proportions, helps it sit well with its neighbors, despite its size. From the building housing the new superpower, confidently stepping into the shoes of the old world powers to the inconspicuous fortress, keen to play down its size and power. As far as embassies go, it breaks the mold in the game of diplomacy, stating clearly that all matters. It will amaze you to know that in 2006, Russian Countess Anka Videv staged a three-day hunger strike in protest of the threat she felt the embassy brought to the area, while others took out a double-page advert in newspapers against the building's presence. In 2007, a $15 million security upgrade created a ring of bollards around the site and closed the east side of the square to traffic. But as the needs of the embassy began to outgrow the building, the security threat along with the regular protests outside the gates made it clear the embassy had to move. And it did move to Nine Elms, South London. For the uninitiated, South London has historically been seen as the less glamorous side of the city. Rumor has it taxis would once refuse to cross the river after a certain time of the night. In reality, South London is no better or worse than north of the river, but in a business where appearances are everything, it was a bold move. At the time, Nine Elms was home to a wholesale market, sorting office, cement factory, and not much else. The choice wasn't completely out of left field. The embassy would spearhead a wider $48 billion redevelopment of the surrounding area. But even today, despite a glut of luxury housing and a rather out-of-place sky pool, it lacks the prestige of Mayfair. You might know Mayfair as the most expensive square on a London Monopoly board, and it's at Grosvenor Square in the heart of the exclusive neighborhood that the U.S. has had a toehold for centuries. So much so that it's earned the nickname Little America. The development of the new embassy was paid for by the sale of the old embassy and other real estate in London. Around $800 million was reserved for the building itself. Construction on the winning design began in 2013. The new embassy, designed by the Philadelphia-based firm Kieran Timberlake, features far more amenities in its 500,000 square feet including lofted halls and beaming light art. A bit of aesthetic diplomacy the State Department hopes will be more popular than the old embassy's ominous bald eagle sculpture that has glared down at passing Londoners for 50 years. 
The building is a huge cube perched on top of an artificial hill, a nod to the Mott and Bailey-style castles while also attempting to represent the rock-solid nature of American democracy. Meanwhile, the plan is a monumental effort to soften and hide the vast security features of this impregnable fortress. Its unique facade affords generous natural light throughout the interior and takes advantage of the site's striking views. The high-performance facade uses laminated glazing with an outer envelope of ethylene tetrafluoroethylene. The envelope prevents excessive solar gain and mitigates glare while uniformly distributing daylight throughout the building. This reduces the energy required to cool and light the building. A 100-foot clear perimeter around the building to cushion the building from blasts and provide a clear line of sight. As you walk around, you notice there's no imposing perimeter fence. Instead, intruders are kept out through the constant use of sleight of hand. The northern edge of the site is protected from the busy road by a hedge concealing a row of anti-vehicle bollards. If anything were to get through, it would then career down this meadow before falling into the eight-foot moat below. On the south side, the building is separated from the nearby plaza by a rising meadow. Concrete seating doubles up as a vehicle barrier while further up, another nod to traditional English gardens. The meadow grasses hide a trench. Also known as a haha, -ha, these were built to keep livestock out without spoiling the view. Now it does the same for people. Let's look at the energy-efficient design. The building's energy-efficient design conserves as much energy as possible through strategies such as daylight-responsive lighting and shade controls, passive and active chilled beams, efficient mechanical systems, and combined heat and power generation. The building harnesses renewable resources including solar energy gathered by photovoltaic cells and geothermal energy generated through ground source heat pumps, which use the consistent temperature of the earth to heat and cool the building. Surprisingly, the building attracted criticism when it was opened in 2018. The comparison of the building with a castle was taken the wrong way by some. London's other famous castle, the Tower of London, was built by an invading army to intimidate the local population. The extent of the security features, however well concealed, was seen by many as excessive even in an age where elsewhere in the city heightened security is a fact of life. But as an embassy, it has to reflect America's position in the world, both symbolically and practically. Let's now talk about the building sitting in the center of a spiraling park, featuring a mix of American and British trees, a deliberate nod to the English tradition of urban parks, highlighting the shared history between the UK and the US. The tall grasses and wildflowers planted in the garden symbolize the familiarity of both countries and artwork by British artist Rachel Whiteread of a typical American flatpack house from the 50s adorning a huge wall. There are also internal gardens that reflect different areas of the United States, one themed as the canyon lands of Arizona being filled with cacti, while the Pacific forest has steel girders cut to resemble redwood trees. The garden plantings not only represent the diversity of the United States landscape, but they were also selected for their capacity to thrive in specific garden orientations. One of the nearby developments by EcoWorld Ballymore is the Embassy Gardens, which features a suspended swimming pool between two towers, 10 floors up, which will allow residents to swim while watching over the embassy and vice versa. Inside, the decor is glitzy, with a huge government insignia, glass stairs, sweeping stone walls, and iridescent crests hung from the ceiling. Even the glass, blast-proof windows are covered in little stars, which is supposed to stop birds flying into the walls. The ambassador said he hoped to put his stamp on the embassy and make the interiors more patriotic. The new Crystal Fortress would be the most expensive embassy ever built, easily topping America's sprawling compound in Iraq, which cost taxpayers some $700 million and was completed over budget and years behind schedule. A new embassy in Pakistan is projected to cost $850 million. This compound, in much less danger than its counterparts in Baghdad and Islamabad, was proposed by James Timberlake, an architect, as a metaphorical outreach to Britain, a beacon that is a respectful icon representing the strength of the US-UK relationship. Ambassador Woody Johnson mentioned that the new embassy represented a signal to the world that the special relationship between the US and the UK is stronger and is going to grow and get better. Ambassador Johnson, who owns the New York Jets, a basketball team, said that the price tag was a bargain compared to the $1.6 billion stadium built for his team in New Jersey. The embassy is a physical manifestation of the long-term commitment to the special relationship between the United States and the United Kingdom. Thousands of embassy visitors benefit from a modern, secure, and accessible facility that fully supports the most active and important bilateral relationships in the world, providing free internet access to visitors for as long as they are in the vicinity and its side attraction to tourists. If you find value in the content we provide in this channel, please leave a comment down below. If you have visited this U.S. Embassy in London, 
kindly share your experiences in the comments sections. To get the latest updates, kindly hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.